not faint, not give up. You say, may not always pray, not throw their hands up. Lord, we come knocking on the doors of heaven tonight. Lord, I ask you to help us. You told us to wait upon you. You told the disciples to tarry away till they be endued with power from all high. Lord, we need to be endued. Jesus, we need power. Lord, we need you to clothe us. We need your spirit. God, to help us, Lord. God, in the time that we're living in, Jesus, we need that life that you said you come to give us. You said in you was life. And that life was the light of man. Lord, we need that light, that understanding, that knowledge, your wisdom. Lord, we need your power, your anointing in order to overcome God, these evil days that we're living in. Lord, we're living in a evil generation. You said a generation that is seven times more wicked than it was in the days of Noah. Lord, we see this darkness, the evil that's out here. You said we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. Lord, all these principalities and forces that come to war against our minds, the enemy comes to steal kill and destroy. Jesus, you said you come that we might have life. My God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, give us what we need to make it. Give us what we need to overcome. You said there's a people that's going to overcome by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony, their testimony is going to be how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who went about doing good, healing all that was oppressed of the devil. Lord, you come to save us, come to deliver us, you come to set man free from sin. From sickness, from the devil, you come to set us free from the curse, from the power of Satan. Lord, we feel these old thought forces, these powers of the enemy, God in our time, and we can't make it by ourselves. We need your help. We need your strength. God, we need mercy. Help us, Lord. As we come tonight, get us on one accord. God, get us on one mind. Lord, get us in one spirit. You said, where two or three are gathered together in your name, there you are in the midst. Lord, we need you to be in the midst of us. God, we need you to be your presence to overshadow us, to keep us, to protect us. Lord, we want that hedge to be put about us, that wall of fire, that protection, the blood of Jesus being applied to the doorposts of our lives, of our hearts, our spirits. Oh, Jesus. Lord, stir our hearts up. Sanctify our hearts. Sanctify 
our minds. Give us the mind of Christ. You said to be spiritually minded. It's life and peace. Help us, Lord, to be spiritual minded. To be God conscious. Lord, allow your word to be hidden in our hearts. And we not sin against you. David said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not hear me. Lord, don't let us regard iniquity in our hearts. Don't let us have anything hidden in our hearts. Lord, whether it be an attitude, a grudge, whether it be an unforgiving spirit, Lord, don't let us have any of these things in our hearts. We want our prayers to be heard. We want our prayers to be granted. Jesus, these whirlwinds, these storms, all that rising and brewing up again. I know you're not appointing us to wrath, but to obtain salvation. Help us, Lord, to obtain salvation. Give us a ear to hear with your spirit speaking.
people start believing in God and get this junk out of their mind and this evil out of their hearts. People judge them with man of God for what they are. But you can't judge a man of God with a filth that's in your eyes. That you have to look at them with filth and culture and you have to read filth and you sex is on your mind. What sex they on a Christian mind? Hallelujah! What's it don't? have sex? No, Christians. Third is love. There's a difference in sex and love. Say amen. There's a difference in the product of love and the product of sex. Say amen. You can tell the difference. A difference when a, when a child is born by the product of love, a child is full of love. Say amen. Hallelujah. Those kids are different. They're clean and they're pure. Six, six. 
looked like they were close, right behind me. Oh, I couldn't tell you they'll be, but I know one thing, it's close. I said it's close, and if ten years brought it to pass, or fifteen, if it was ninety, if it was ninety instead of eighty, if it was a hundred, what's that? Well, my God, I won't even be seventy years old at the end of this 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 journey of this whole of two thousand years. Are you listening? Some of you won't be seventy years old. Let me tell you something, people. In my lifespan and in your lifespan, right here, y'all may be dead and you may be dead, but the most darkest time that this generation's ever faced of three years of mourning, three years of starvation, and it's gonna be worse than any famine ever was. It's going to be worse than famine in Africa. It's going to be worse than famine in India. It's going to be worse than all the starvation that's happened here in our own country. It's going to be worse than the starvation of the poor people in Guatemala and in Honduras and throughout South America and throughout Korea and throughout the hungry nation and the nations that men have starved to death by the multiplies of thousands. It's going to be worse than any earthquake. Can you think about it? Your child moaning and saying, Mama, I'm hungry. Can you think about your son saying, Mama, I'm hungry. And because you prayed around and went to the wrong church and you sat under the wrong preacher, you didn't have a preacher to preach your faith. You didn't have a preacher. And the Lord spoke to me in the picture and he told me, he said, the great faith that's going to take them through, that the faith that was once delivered to the saints is now being delivered to them. He said, this is the faith that they shall live by as they live in these days. He said, these next three years and a half to four years, his years of faith better grow. He said, it better grow in your tree. It better grow into a place that a man can live by. It. That a man can wake up in the morning knowing that he can't go to the store. Knowing that he can't go. It's going to be like Moses and the children of Israel going out there every morning to get their food and to get their mattress. They had to go out there and pay. It wouldn't be nice they went out there and wouldn't believe. But they had something they knew that it would be there before they went. Because they were serving the great I am of Abraham. The great I am of Isaac. The great I am of Jacob. The great I am of Moses, of Moses, the God of the burning bush had spoken to Moses and said, Moses, tell the children of Israel to get their baskets and get a big enough basket of how many kids they got to bring enough manna back, to bring enough food back. When they said, can God put a table in the wilderness? Moses said, God can, but don't you live it.
more power in their faith that they won't worry. <coughs> I guess I've lost 10,000 friends and some of them close to that, brother. But I want you to know along this way I've gone through some tribulations to have this faith that I wouldn't trade my friends of 10,000 or more or those that were close to another brother for what I have tonight burning my bones knowing that I came to the place hallelujah that I can press on I can go through anything that's set before me any mountain thank God I can yeah. Any chicken or tree, I can pluck it up by the roots and tell it to be cast into any sea in which I desire. What things soever I desire when I pray, thank God it's always given to me because I've got a faith, a faith that was delivered to the faith. And I'm walking and I'm talking and I'm living by my faith. And this faith is the faith of Jesus Christ. And if you'll open up your bones and open up your souls, you're going to get this faith. You better cast away them doubts, and you better doubt them doubts, and you better get rid of them, them confusions, because in confusions, there's sons of perdition. There are confusions of the devil that has been sent to destroy your faith, to rob you of the very faith that's been impregnated in the hearts and minds of men and women that's actually going to pray. They're going into the hospital and they're going to head to the bed. They're going to walk the streets and they're going to speak to the lame. Hallelujah! They're going down to the pure homes and they're going to resurrect the dead. You talk about funeral eruptions. They're going to be four funeral eruptions. They're going to be more funerals that turn into resurrection in the headlines than you've ever seen. They're going to be man with no legs. Hallelujah! Got up off the street and was walking Unnumberable, incountable, unnumberable women 
And of course, there were men, there were boys and there were girls. There were old men and there were young men. There were old women and young women. But lots more women. And I looked at this glorious visitation was falling upon them. Thank God they were standing up and I saw these women speaking bold. But they were speaking the word of God. I want to tell you something, ladies. And I want to tell you something, men. You're not to go out and preach doctrines. That's what the matter with the young preachers. They go and they preach doctrines. The pastor is to teach doctrine. The gospel is to be preached to a dying world. You don't go out and win a world with doctrines. You go out and you try to have revivals preaching what the prophet preached. But what the pastor preached, it don't work. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Men dying for the gospel. They're dying for the gospel. And the gospel is where the power of God is. The gospel is where the power of faith is. And I saw these women standing up speaking bold. Bold is men. Bold is apostles. Bold is prophets. Thank you. But they were speaking by God's impregnated word of the gospel. And they were speaking by faith. They were actually speaking and speaking the word of God like a prophetic word. But it was the word of God coming out of them and men and the whole congregation was being illuminated. And I've seen store buildings. And I've seen great places of worship. I saw in Dallas a great church sprung up under this ministry. Hallelujah! And I had a connection. Brother Byron maybe had a connection. Hallelujah! The Lord said, hurry to Dallas and get a place for this ministry. Glory! Right, I'm going to move. And there's going to be a place spring up for souls to be saved. And I want to tell you, oh, he told me that there's going to be a place sprang up in Houston. Hallelujah for souls to be saved like San Paul. Go to these areas of the blessed areas is to bring these people in during the Antichrist to get a word of God will have to extend these into these buildings before it's over. But how the people here? Because I saw in this great vision, churches bringing up and we were getting them saved and we were training them. And I saw these four years, three and a half to four years ahead of them. And I saw this great power and great life and a great illumination falling upon us. And I heard the Lord say, if America receives not and recognize not the time of her visitation now in these next four years, then she will fall at the feet of communism. Come by behind her. But he said, if you can get people to recognize this dissipation of faith and the Holy Ghost, he said, I'm going to stand up. I'm going to stand up. And said, men's going to stand up like Stephen's. People's going to go down to Samaria like this. Hallelujah. I want you to know in this great time of dissipation that the Almighty God is going to stand. But when you go, the gospel is the preacher. I said, the gospel is the preacher. Do you hear it? I said, the gospel is the preacher. Not doctrine, but the gospel. Somebody said, what about the doctrine of Christ? It is the gospel. Huh? It is the gospel. But he said, if any man bring not the doctrine of Christ on the world. He's talking to a church. Receive not into that church. Any man bring any other doctrine, any other gospel, any man preach any other gospel, what I'm preaching, he said, let it be accursed. And what did he preach? What did Paul preach? Christ in you. What did he preach? He said, I received it not of man, neither was I taught it of man, but I received it, I conferred not with apostles before me. 
But I was in the raven desert and I received it by revelation of Jesus Christ. And what was it? It was the revelation of Jesus Christ. It was the revelation that Jesus Christ had. And that was God manifested through Him. Hallelujah. And I want you to know tonight that this is the mouth I saw this great light and this great power of faith coming forth. It was the power of the gospel manifested through faith. And men was believing what they were preaching. Men knew when they preached the gospel that it was the power of God on the salvation. They knew that by the power of the gospel that the yoke of sickness and disease. And I saw from the hideous people, my God, my God, I've never seen such deliverance from demons in this vision. I saw demons and I've heard the voices of demons. I've heard demon spirits crying out with loud voices, leave us alone. We know who you are. You are the, the holy prophet of God. You are the And I could hear those that were gifted by this great word, that was gifted by this great faith, saying unto the devil, I seal your mouth. I shove you not to speak because I heard some of the things that Satan was speaking out. They were not to be spoken out. They were things of unclean. They were dirty things. They were spirits of perverse. They were perverse spirits. And I seen a deliverance of those that had been bound. And I seen it took high and and ten people. cast out those spirits with their words. And I've seen people fall as they were dead. And I hear them say, stand up on your feet. And they would lift their hands and go in, knowing that they were free. And I saw the yoke being broke. I saw alcoholics. I saw the harlot. I saw the lust. The man is bound with cast out. I saw the craving of sin. I saw the craving of lust and evil things. Being cast out. And I heard men begin to cry out for deliverance. And I could, the news and the testimonies of the delivered ones. The ones that had been delivered from their sicknesses and their spirits were telling it. There was north and abroad that there was a man, that there was a woman, that there was a people that they could go to, that there was a church, that there was a place in San Antonio, that there was a place in Dallas, that there was a place in Houston, that there was a place in over in. Huh? It's free? You listening? Some of you women, go over to St. Angelo and start a church. Go over and start a church. Go to Abilene. My God, get in there and get your storm in. Hallelujah. Go to Abilene. Go somewhere. Go over there. Open up a place. Take the 15 and deliver. There'll be 15 more come back. Deliver 15 the first Sunday or the first. It don't matter whether it's Sunday. My God, you don't have to have Sabbath school. No Sunday school. Have church. My God, this is days of church. Tell them they want to learn. They need to be taught doctrine. Bring them over here. Get me on my kit. Some work. Get some others. But this is a day and I've seen that great visitation. And I heard that voice of the Lord say, If America recognizes not her time of visitation and receives not this visitation, said, As I wept over Jerusalem, he said, Soon you will weep over America. He said, If you allow, if you allow, and if the other ministers, and y'all better listen to this. He said, if you allow this confusion that has sprung up, trouble you. And if you allow this confusion to trouble the church, and if this confusion of going back from the faith, if you don't ignore it, 
shut up with the word and give people something to hold on to. He said, the scene of the vision changed where those glorious words was being preached. Where those holy works was being done. I've seen men and women stuttering for words. They were hunting words. They were empty words. They had no anointing. They had nothing to break the yoke. And he said, you see this? said, this is the way it's going to be. If the spirit of Antichrist ain't driven back. He said, if the Holy Ghost, if this Holy Ghost revival that I'm pouring out, this faith don't stand up against this spirit of Antichrist and this strong delusion, said, men is going to stand up for words in this country. He said, they're going to stand in the pulpit and hunt words. And even those that had that great word of revelation and the great gospel of faith that's being preached now, he said, you'll stammer to, pr to preach. He said, they'll stammer to preach and they'll hunt words. Oh, and I want you to know, I told Brother Crawford and Sister Grant, I told Brother Coley, I believe, going to the airport. Brother Coley's taking me to the airport. I said, Brother Coley, I've got the great... Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is a word that some of y'all probably wasn't even born back in the uh, late 70s. God brought this kind of word back then. This is what I was built upon. This is my instructions. That's why uh, the kind of word that you hear me giving you, it was passed down to me back then. The faith that was once delivered is what now we are in here contending for. This is a revival that we are contending for. So Sir Ruby, remember this kind of word. This is the kind of word that this generation haven't heard. You know, get on Facebook, you see a bunch of dancing, forms of godliness, but you don't hear this kind of word on Facebook. A YouTube. You don't hear this kind of word. This is why, you know, God got us in here praying. You see, where there is no vision of people go into all this confusion, all this other stuff. Even when the devil tried to bring that confusion here, through a people, a, a few people lying, you know, it didn't phase us. I'm, I mean, you're going to have three or four of that. Wasn't on the foundation to begin with, naturally. You know, if they were not on it, what was really in them is now manifested that they really wasn't in it to begin with. But the one that's really in here and that's really rooted and grounded, that stuff just makes us stronger. Causes us to dig deeper, don't it? And, but I wanted you to hear some of this so you know, you know, there is something, you know, and we, the reason why God helped it back because we fasted, we prayed, we fasted, went on 40 day fast, 50 day fast, every year, for I don't know how many years, and stood in the gap and sent the gospel like God told us to over a hundred different nations and over a hundred different cities in America, big giant tents. And that's why God spared us and gave us this, this much time left like we have. Now, all of that that he's spoken, there's, no, there's not a bunch of people standing in the gap. So what he's spoken back then, we're beginning to see it now. We're fixing to see the fulfillment of what should have been 40 years ago. What should have been a generation. God held it back a whole generation. Because a whole lot of people was praying and fasting and seeking God back in them days. And uh, now, I don't know uh, if you got a lot of people doing a whole lot of that. But Brother T.D., you know, that is what all God spoke back then is now upon us. Paul said, take heed to yourself lest that which was spoken by the prophets come upon you. See, what's been spoken back then is now upon us. And we're going to see both sides of it. We're going to see the bad part of it, the persecution, all that he spoke about, and we're going to see 
the revival part of it, the great deliverance part of it. And that's what you've heard, you know, a little bit of both sides of it tonight. To know why we're out here in the country, why we're tearing, why we're hungry, why we're seeking God. Because without a vision, without this vision, you know, we're all in them city somewhere, in some old dead church, perishing. But God has sealed us and he planted that word in us. And God still have a remnant. And out of this remnant is going to come forth a great army. A number that no man can number. It's going to come out of this remnant that God still has scattered here and there in different places. Thank you, Jesus. So this is uh, uh, giving a little glimpse of what we was brought up under. And what, we, what kept us fasting. What kept us praying. What kept us from going that old charismatic route. And what kept us from compromising. I know a lot of them went that way. But a lot of them didn't. Some are free. They're still holding on. So saints, stay encouraged. You see what's behind our seeking God. You, God is allowing you to look on top of the hill and see what's on the other side. If we hold on a little bit longer. He's fixing to bring all of this to pass now. Both, man, if, we, if we don't seek God, then we're going to see all of this um, that he spoke about uh, this persecution part uh, hit us. And he'll, you'll see a lot of people denying the faith. But if we do prepare ourselves, then we're going to help spearhead this revival. We're going to be the ones that's going to help birth it and bring it out. But both is coming. Both a great and a terrible day is coming. That's what we have been brought up on. This is the kind of word that we're going to have to birth in us. This is the revival. It's still here. God don't change. God don't get old. God's word never loses power. What God has spoken is going to come to pass in your time. You are the ones now that's going to see it. And your praying and seeking God is going to help you to survive. And going to help you not to deny. Him. It's going to help you to bring forth this revival. Bring forth the great day of the Lord. Amen. The three and a half years that he spoke about is now right, on, right around the corner. And see, we believed that back then, it was coming back then, but enough people prayed and fasted and sought God for year after year after year after year and we sent missionaries and we sent people all over the country all over the world and God said if we had done if we'd done that he would hold it back and he held all of that back now I don't know if we have enough people around the world enough missionaries enough men and women of God can hold it back any longer I don't think so you know, there's one scripture that tells us in the book of Revelations, time shall be no longer. Y'all remember reading that? Time shall be no longer. In other words, time to run out on America. Time to run out on the world. God said, I'm not going to hold none of this back any longer. It's now fixing to be fulfilled. That's why we're in here praying. That's why we're in here seeking God. Let's take just, a, just five more minutes, if you don't mind. And let's uh, brother, um, half, get the microphone. Let's pray for those that uh, joins us on Monday night prayers. And, but this is something that we need to uh, take hold of. Amen. This is for our day, our generation, isn't it? Amen. Come on, just for just a few more minutes, and God, you touch those that joins us and listens to us online and prays with us. That's got. People that are sick, are bound, are suffering. Jesus, help us. Lord, we believe. We still believe this word. We still stand. And we're still contending now. Because we know you're finna do a quick work and cut it short. Yes, Jesus. Come on, just for about five minutes. Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, have mercy upon us tonight. Lord, we believe this word that we heard. Lord, a time of a visitation. Lord, a people of faith. Lord, a remnant. 
God, that you're going to raise up. Jesus, we want to be a part, Lord. Help us, Lord, as you said, to earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Lord, the time, Lord, of the end is upon us. Lord, thank you for the men of God that have gone before us that have fasted and prayed and labored. Lord, and you held this thing back. Well, Lord, now the time is upon us. God, the end is here. Persecution is coming. Lord, wrath is coming. Judgment is coming. Lord, but you also said a move of God is coming. Lord, help us, Lord. We want to be on that side. Lord of the gospel, we want to be on that side. Lord, with a great faith is in us. Lord, that spoken word revival that you have been telling us about is coming. Lord, help us, Lord, to knock, to ask, to seek, and we'll find you. Lord, that we'll come into that perfect will of God. You said some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Lord, we want the perfect will of God to come in our lives. Help us, Lord, to build ourselves up in prayer. To build ourselves up in this word. To build ourselves up in our most holy faith. You said by praying in the Holy Ghost. Give us a spirit of intercession. Lord, give us a spirit of self-denial. God, give us a spirit of prayer. Lord, give us a spirit to intercede and stand in the gap. You said many are going to come in. Many are going to be saved. Many are going to be delivered. Many are going to be set free. Lord, you said as a people that you're going to raise up. Handmaids, servants, young men, old. A people that you're going to anoint to drive back the devil, to drive back the evil, to cause the lame to walk, the blinded eyes to open. Jesus, we want to be a part of what you're going to do. Give us an ear to hear what your spirit is speaking tonight. Help us to be doers of this word and not just hearers. To build our house upon a rock. To build our house upon this word. To build our house upon this revelation. To build our house upon prayer. God, that when the winds blow, the rains descend, the floods begin to rise. Lord, that our house won't fall. Lord, that we won't deny you. We won't betray you. We won't be swept away. God, by the enemy. But Lord, we'll stand and we'll stand. That we'll be one of those that's going to proclaim your name. That we'll be one of those that's going to preach the word. That we'll be one of those that's going to stand up with a boldness. God, put a boldness inside of us. Put a boldness inside of us to stand up for the truth. To stand up for the gospel. To declare your generation. God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Help us tonight. Yes, Lord. And touch. Touch all of those, God, that are listening online. Touch their homes. Touch their families. Touch their loved ones. Restore the backsliders. Break the yoke off of those that Satan have blinded their eyes, their hearts, hardened their hearts. Lord, and touch all the different ones that are trying to obey you and trying to keep a standard up. Lord, we thank you for allowing them storms to bypass us. Lord, let it continually be so that, Lord, you bypass us like you told us this weekend, Jesus. Pass over us. Lord, I thank you for passing over us this evening, this day. Tonight, you passed over us. Continue to pass over us by your mercy and by your grace. Jesus, keep us praying hungering, thirsting, crying out and seeking you. In the name of Jesus, keep us, Lord, in your protection. 
Keep our heads around us. Keep us under the divine protection of the blood of Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Send your word to those that are sick, those that are bound, those that are lost, those that are oppressed, those that need reviving. Send your word to every home and every individual. Send it, God. Break those voices and powers. Bring this revival to pass. Do a quick work. Do a quick work. Do a quick work. Cut it short in righteousness. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Don't forget. Let's get it here tomorrow night. You're going to do some tearing, if you don't mind. Seeking God. And if God lead us to pray I and mean, to talk or exalt for about 20 or 30 minutes, we'll do that. But if not, if He anoint us to just pray through, we'll do that. But the scripture says, be not weary in well doings. Don't be weary in coming here praying an hour, 30 minutes. Don't be weary in seeking God. This is the most important hour of 30 minutes of your whole day. It's the time that you spent with God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Stand on your feet, please. Thank you, Jesus. This kind of word put a soul in it, saying you don't it. Yes, it does. And let's get in here. How I many of you feel you need to seek God a little bit more? Just breaking up a little ground. We need some more. 